Today we're going to work through the Zojo desktop tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to build a simple task manager that will allow us to enter tasks, add them to the list, remove them by deleting them or completing the item. So let's get started. First, drag out a list box and use the alignment guides to help you position it. You're going to make it so that it fills about the top two thirds of the screen. Next, we'll need three buttons to represent our completed, our add and our delete buttons. And again, use those alignment guides to help you position them so that they are even with each other. And finally, we'll need a text field that you can drag out and place in between the two buttons. And then use the alignment guides and the, um, the handles to make it the same width as the list box. So now everything we needed to do to build our user interface is now complete. The next thing we need to do is adjust the properties, which is how each of these behave. So first, click on the untitled bar, which is to select the window one, and you're going to go to the inspector. We will rename window one to task manager, task manager window, and change the title from untitled to task manager. Next, we're going to adjust the properties for the list box. Select the list box and change the name from list box one to task list. The list box will have a heading. Find the has header property and change the value from off to on. The list box has two columns, one to show the completed status and the other to show the name of the task. So change the value from one to two and press return to see the list box appear now with two columns. Now we're going to change the header columns. So find the initial value property and click the pencil icon to its right. Type completed and then tab and then type task. And click OK and you'll see the columns headings for the list box change. Since the completed column is only going to uh, contain a single check mark, it can be narrower. So we're going to adjust the column widths of the field. And lastly, we need to make change to the locking. So the list box gets larger or smaller as the window size changes. Now we're gonna adjust the properties of the delete button. Click the delete button on window one and change the name from button one to delete button. Change the caption from button to delete. And finally, we're going to make some changes to the locking. So we'll click the lock so that the right and bottom are the only ones that are locked. Next, we're going to select the add button to adjust its properties. And we'll change the name from button two to, you guessed it, add button. And we'll change the caption from button to add. And we're going to adjust the locking so that the locks on the left and bottom are the only ones locked. The last button we're going to do is the complete button, change the name to complete button, and change the caption from button to complete. The locks need to be adjusted so that the locks on the right and bottom are locked and the other ones are unlocked. Now let's select the text field. We're going to change the name from text field one to task field since this is where the user will enter the tasks. And we're going to change the lock so that the left bottom and right are locked and the top is unlocked. After adjusting all of the properties, this is what our final layout should look like. Don't forget to save your app and we're going to hit the run button to make sure everything looks as it should. We're not going to worry about acts just yet because we haven't added any code, but resize your window and make sure all of your controls stay locked the way they uh, we're supposed to and if everything looks good you can go ahead and close that and go back to Zojo so we can add some code and make this work. The add button adds tasks to the task list and the code you add to the button needs to take what was typed in task field and add it as a new row to the list. So we're going to double click on the add button control and the event handler window appears. When a button is pressed, the pressed event handler is called, so this is what we want to add. So select pressed event handler and press OK. 
Let's type in the following code and to add a row to the list box, we're going to be using the add row method. Add row is one of the many methods available to list boxes and adds values to the two columns in the task list. Now let's save our project and run it to test it out. So you can type tasks into the text field and press the add button to see them appear in the task list. If you get an error message when you run your project, double check the names you have given to the various controls. They need to match the names you're using in your code. Now let's go back to Zojo and get some more functionality working. Let's go back to the task manager window and double click the complete button and we're going to use its pressed event handler. And now we're going to enter some code to uh, set the value of a particular cell of the list box. We're going to use the cell property, specifying the row and column. This code puts a checkmark character in column zero, which is the completed column of the currently selected row. Now let's run the project again to see how things are looking. You should be able to add a few tasks to the task list and then select one and press complete to see the check mark appear. After you're satisfied with how that looks, let's go back to Zojo and get some more buttons functioning. We're going to go to task manager window and now we'll double click the delete button. We're going to use the pressed event handler, so let's press OK to go to its code editor. We're going to add the following code here so that when we select an item and press delete, it's removed from our task list. Now let's save the project and run our app again. And let's add a few simple tasks and click on the task in the task list and click the delete button to see that the task is removed from the list. And once you're satisfied with how that looks, let's go back to Zojo and see if we can add some more exciting things to our app. One question you may have is what happens when you click on the complete or delete buttons but have not selected a task? If you try it, you'll see that you get an out of bounds exception. Let's go ahead and fix that now by adding some additional lines of code. So the code that we are going to add is in the pressed event handler of the delete button. So we're going to enter the following code before and after the line we've previously entered. Now let's select the press event handler of the complete button. The code actually looks really similar to what we just entered on the delete button. We'll wanna make sure that we insert the line before and then end our if statement on the last line. Okay, it's time to test it out. So let's save and run our project again and click the complete button without selecting a row in the task list. Now the code only removes a row if a valid row is selected, so no out of bounds exception should occur. Let's go back to Zojo and add a few more little improvements. Did you notice that there are times when buttons in a task manager probably should not do their action, like we don't want them enabled? Well, let's go and, and fix that now. So let's go to task manager window and select the complete button and turn the enabled property in the appearance group off. And let's repeat this for the additional buttons. So go to the add button and turn that one off and select the delete button and turn that off as well. Now you will need to add code to enable the add button when there is text in the task field. On the window, double click on the task field control. 
the add event handler window appears, and this is a different list than what we've seen for the button properties. So select the text change event handler and press OK to go to the code editor. We're going to add some code that checks the text property of the text field, which is me.text, to see if there's anything there. If there is text there, then the add button is enabled by setting its enabled property to true. And if there is no text there, then it is disabled by setting its enabled property to false. And this is what the code looks like. Now we need to add some code so that the buttons enable when a row is selected and disable when no rows are selected. This is accomplished with the selected row index property of the list box. So let's double click on the list box and its add event handler appears. Make sure the selection changed event is selected and click OK. Now in the code editor, we're going to add some code to make these buttons both enable and disable when we want them to. Now let's save the project and run the app to test it out. Notice that the add button is initially disabled, but try typing some text in the task field. The add button immediately becomes enabled. And if you remove the text from the task field, the buttons again become disabled. Similarly, when you click on a row in the task list, the delete and complete buttons become enabled. That's all. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe so you're notified of new videos. Thanks.